So today I'm on the beautiful island of Kauai and I actually got married day before yesterday. This is kind of my honeymoon, but everything turns into a photo trip when you're a photographer, right? I've come down to this little secluded cove. This is one of the places that I've brought workshops in the past. And I was excited to come here because it's one of those beaches where it feels like everybody's kind of in your way. And the nice part of the, about this beach is that you can get here and have it completely to yourself. So I'm come, I came down here and I'm trying to find compositions. Uh, sun's coming up and it happens really quick in Hawaii, so I gotta get started. So finding composition here is a little bit challenging, especially not knowing you know, which direction I really wanna be pointing. Sunrise is gonna happen directly back over this hill which means that these clouds in this direction should light up the most. But over here, it's a much lower dynamic range scene, and I find that the light looks really nice this way, but the compositions don't, unfortunately. So I'm hoping that I can find a composition shooting in this direction. So true to form, I showed up incredibly unprepared. I actually showed up with two batteries, no battery charger, two SD cards, which is good, one for each camera, but normally I have extras, and zero lens cloths. That's a problem, especially when you're shooting seascapes and stuff, and typically you have to have a lens cloth. So right now I'm using a, a merino wool liner glove as my lens cloth, because I'm very prepared. So we're starting to get a little bit of light in those clouds in the background. The sun is actually up right now, but we're not going to get a big fiery colorful sun sunrise. We're just going to get, I don't know, a cool to warm color temperature contrast thing going on. So compositionally what I'm trying to do here is I've got these interesting rock crevices in, in my foreground where when I get a big enough wave, the, the water kind of sweeps out through that. So here comes a wave, I'm gonna cover my front element, and then as that water, whoop, whoo, and I'm wet. <laughs> so now watch, as the water funnels out, I'm gonna take those shots. I'm going with a fifth of a second. That's slow enough to get just enough water movement. A little bit of motion blur, <laughs> I'm soaked. <laughs> Uh, a little bit of motion blur in that water. Now I'm gonna darken my exposure and get a sky frame, making sure I'm not blowing any highlights there. I'll do the same thing where I'm gonna focus on the background, take that brighter shot at a fifth of a second, take the darker shot, making sure I got those highlights. And that might be as interesting as the sky gets, unfortunately, because the sun is up, but it just happens to be behind all of that cloud cover there, so. Unfortunately, this might be the extent of what we get, but I'm definitely going to emphasize in post-processing the warm to cool color temperature difference we got going on. Here comes another wave, so I'm gonna focus on my foreground. Oh, it wasn't big enough, but you guys get the idea. So I really liked the texture that we captured in this shot. But unfortunately, I did not care for the way that the sky and the light turned out in this photo. Now things are starting to get interesting. Dramatic light this way, create some nice side light in this direction. Waves are picking up, it's looking good now. So I don't know if we're gonna get it again, but shooting this direction, I did get some nice water action here. I'm just kind of using these rocks as something for the water to build up on. Again, I'm using a fifth of a second vertical composition to really accentuate my foreground and to include as much sky as I can. Nice low dynamic range scene. Really liked this shot. 
here you can see the water movement at a fifth of a second you can see we're still maintaining nice texture in the water but it's still giving that sense of movement now the light's getting dramatic this way so i want to move my camera here to try to get some of this drama in this direction now So now the sun is up and we've got a big dynamic range scene here. And shooting seascapes like this in a big dynamic range situation is challenging because we get so many blown highlights on our water. So what I was trying to do is I was getting my water movement before the sun came completely up. And you see how I cover my front element as that, those waves come in. Then as the water starts to recede, I shoot as the water is receding to get that nice flowing water around these rocks. So compositionally what I was trying to do here, and I was kind of honestly operating in too big of a hurry probably, but I was trying to find a nice set of rocks that was getting nice side light, but have the background balanced with the interest of the sun and the cliff balanced with the interest of those trees in the background. Because it was a high dynamic range scene and I'm trying to time waves, that is the really challenging part. So what I was trying to do, if I go back here, I would get my water frames where I'm using a slower shutter speed at about a fifth of a second. And then I would just quickly change my shutter speed before my camera and tripod moved too much from the water and get a couple sky frames. So I would, I would get my water frame and then I would darken my shot get a sky frame, darken my shot more, and get a frame that I'm only going to use in the area around the sun. I think these shots are gonna end up pretty good. This is what it's gonna look like after post-processing. So I talk about reacting to the light a lot, and it's because, you know, that's the way you end up getting the most fruitful photo shoots. So for example, right now, it's really harsh looking that way into the sun. It's just, you know, I'm getting tons of lens flare. I'm not able to get the shutter speeds I want anymore. But if we look this way, it's a much lower dynamic range scene, and we get all of these nice shadows and the side light on these rocks. There's a lot of depth and dimension looking this way when there's none looking this way anymore. So now I'm going to start looking for compositions in this direction, again, reacting to the light. So it's one of the things I talk about a lot. I don't know if I've ever explained it very well. One of the questions that I know that I'm gonna get asked because I get asked this all the time, especially now that I'm shooting seascapes and I've got that big dynamic range is why I don't use graduated filters. The reason I don't use a graduated filter is because I have things other than just bright sky on the top portion of my shot. If I was to bring down a graduated filter, it's going to darken whatever mountain or tree is breaking that horizon line. It's not gonna look natural and there's no way to undo it. So I, I consider that a destructive workflow because you know two years down the road when you're looking at your photos, you can't undo that filter. So you're better off to just exposure blend, learn post-processing, and you'll be able to get a much more natural result and it'll be non-destructive because you can try and try again until you get it right. What I am going to do, however, is I'm going to throw on a three-stop neutral density filter now because I'm no longer able to get the shutter speeds that I want to get. I want to get somewhere between that half and a fifth of a second and even at ISO 50 and then stopping down to like, you know, diffraction land, F18 through F22, I'm not able to get the shutter speeds I want anymore, so I'm throwing... I'm going to throw a three-stop on. This is actually a six-stop. Hold on. Throw a three stop ND filter on. Tighten it down. Now I'll be able to get the shutter speeds I'm looking for. You know, if it gets really bright, that six stop will be perfect, but I think three stop will get me there. So, one of the things that I love so much about Kauai, I think, is just how quick the weather can change. So, you know, earlier we had lost all of our clouds over in the, this direction, and now we've got lots of beautiful drama looking over this way. 
So I've found another composition. That way I can utilize all of that drama and get that really, you know, that hint of a sun star breaking through the clouds. I love the way that those images come out because it's very dark and dramatic and the eye, and it's successful because the eye is drawn to that, you know, point of light. So let me show you the composition that I have lined up here. I feel like I've photographed these rocks in the past. I'll bring up a photo. Um, I'm pretty sure these rocks I've shot before, but regardless, let me show you the composition. I have this nice little cluster of rocks and compositionally I'm doing a similar thing where I have trees balancing both the sun in the background and the other cliff face but with the sun partially obscured I really like all of the drama we have with those backlit clouds. So settings wise I'm using F16 again. I'm focusing on this closest rock and I'm trying to dial in right around a, a 0.4 seconds somewhere in here. So I'm just letting waves roll in. Earlier I got some pretty nice waves and I'm just waiting for the waves to happen as they roll in here. Get those. Obviously the light changes dramatically when the sun pokes out from behind those clouds. So I have to keep an eye on my exposure. But once I get my water frame, I'll take these. I will speed up my shutter speed, that way I'm capturing all those highlights and those dark clouds. I'll blend those two shots together in Photoshop. Now oftentimes in an image like this you kind of have to focus stack it too, so what I'll do is I'll get my water frame focused on these rocks, I'll focus on the trees in the background or something on the horizon, take that bright shot, and then speed up my shutter speed, darken down the frame, darken down the frame and take that shot. Another problem is that when the sun is poking out, I'm getting lots of lens flare. So sometimes in those water frames, I'll cover the sun with my hand. That way I'm not getting as much lens flare and I'll blend it all together. Sometimes it takes three or four images to come away with one nice clean shot, but it's worth the extra effort because you're not gonna have the lens flare and all that stuff. I love what the sky is doing right now. While we still have those nice rays poking out of those clouds, I'm gonna to continue to shoot, and hopefully I'll get a wave at the same time as this really interesting dramatic sky. Despite sunrise not being a super colorful one, I think we still actually came away with some photos and can't beat this, right? This is literally paradise. Just lukewarm water, 70 degrees. It's pretty damn nice. It's time to head head in, maybe grab a coconut or maybe, is it too early for my time? It's gotta be almost 8 or 8 a.m. It's probably time for my time. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. This might be the first video I've released since I hit 100,000 subscribers, which is incredibly humbling. It's kind of mind-boggling, honestly. But thank you guys so much for your support over these last however many years. I'm pretty damn lucky. It's hard, it's hard to be upset with life right about now. But I uh, hope you guys are keeping warm, and we'll catch you in the next video. Here's the photos that we got, and we'll see you next time. Take it easy, everybody.